Okay, let's talk about volcanoes. Let's just review this concept map that we did the other day real quick. I know this is not easy to see, but you can refer to yours later while you look at this. Remember, there's three main types of volcanoes that we're talking about. Number one is the shield volcano. It's made primarily of lava. It is gently sloped and has a very broad base to it. That's the shape of it. And it is formed by quiet eruptions. The second type of volcano is the cinder volcano. The cinder volcano is made up of primarily tephra, which is different than just the primarily of the lava. It's more um, rocky. Its shape is it has very loose sided, um, steep sided, and very loosely compact. That's because the tephra falls down onto it and makes it very loose. So again, it's very steep in shape and very loosely packed. Um, it is formed by explosive eruptions. The very last type of volcano we talked about are composite volcanoes, or also called stratovolcanoes. And these are made of both lava and ash and cinder, or tethra, eruptions. The shape is they're very, very tall, and they're symmetrical. And they are formed by quiet and explosive volcanoes, and alternating between the two. Remember, for the test, you need to know an example of each type of volcano and where they can be found um, in the world. So with that said, I have a picture here of three different types of volcanoes, one, two, and three. So let's take a look at the very first type of volcano here and see if we can tell what type of volcano it is. If you look at your picture you have in front of you, you notice that it is kind of steep. You also notice that we have both lava and tephra that it is made of. So we have lava, we have tephra, and we know that it is steep. With what we said already, what type of volcano do you think that would be? Well, according to our other sheet that we did, it would be a composite or a strato volcano. And again, why? Because it's layers of lava and tephra, and it's very, very steep-sided. So that's what number one would be. So let's look at our example number two. Again, it is fairly steep <clears throat> in shape there. So it looks like it's not as compact. So let's say it's loose, steep, and it is made primarily of tephra. Now, go back to our concept map that we just saw there, and we would have to say that that is probably a cinder volcano. Remember, the example of our cinder volcano is the one that we found in Mexico, Veracruzan volcano. All right, now let's take a look at the third volcano right here put this up here so you can see as I write. If you notice, it's very sloped, sided. It is not steep. And it is very cone-shaped. So if I refer back to my concept map there, that would definitely be a shield volcano. Remember, shield volcanoes are, are the volcanoes that are found in the Hawaiian Islands. And those volcanoes found in the Hawaiian Islands are made primarily um, from hot spots. So let's talk about different ways that volcanoes can be made, um, since we just mentioned that about the Hawaiian Islands volcanoes. Volcanoes um, can be made primarily um, by divergent plates that come together, that go apart. So we can have divergent plates that move apart that can cause them. I can have convergent plates that make volcanoes. And we need, usually need to make sure that we have a subduction zone in this area. So I need two plates of different densities that come together to make this happen, okay? 
So this is how um, made volcanoes. All right. So it really has to do with plate movement. So the plate movement that occurs at the Earth's plate boundaries, they create the volcanoes in two ways. Either the plates separate and form rifts from which the magmas can flow and cool the seafloor, the plates collide and one plate is forced underneath the other. So either divergent or convergent plates. But remember, with the convergent plates, you have to have a subduction zone for that to occur. Magma then um, uh, forms and it comes to the Earth's surface. They can also be formed by not only by that the plate movement from the plates moving apart or together, but plate movements over hot spots. So the plates travel over these hot spots, okay? And then the magma melts through the weak spots in the Earth's crust and they come up and you get those nice slow eruptions. And those slow eruptions are the type that give you the shield volcanoes that create the Hawaiian Islands. The hotspots was in our Bill Nye um, video that we saw where he had that long um, Pacific plate and it was moving slowly over that one hot spot right in the middle and then every so often it would spurt up. You need to keep in mind that these are things that take a very, very, very long time. The last thing that we want to talk about that will be on your test is um, what creates certain eruptions. So we know that they can be quiet or they can be explosive. So what is going to determine whether they're quiet or exposed, explosive? Well, what that is, is number one, the amount of water vapor that is inside. So that kind of makes sense because when we have volcanoes that are created by convergent plates where you have a subduction zone. One of those can be an oceanic plate, which is um, um, less dense, and it moves underneath and pushes up, more dense, excuse me, pushes, goes, falls underneath and pushes up over, pushes up and that water vapor gets trapped in there. <clears throat> so that it's the amount of water vapor in there and the different amounts of gases present, all right? So this can cause it, whether to be quiet eruption or a explosive eruption. If I have a large amount of either of these, then I have explosive. Or, um, whether the amount of gases leaks out, which would make it quiet, or builds up, which would make it explosive. Okay, so those are the different types. This kind of reviews all of the stuff that will be on your test in terms of short answers and um, that type of thing. All right, if you have any questions, make sure you review this again so that you understand um, what will be on the test.